Hi everyone, this is Darcy UK. I recently demoed how to make this pretty painted paper bow at Doncaster and a few of you said you would like to see this done in a video. So today I'm going to take you through the steps, showing you how you can create this bow from just a simple piece of printer paper and your favourite paints, stamps and inks, showing how you can control the colours and the patterns. So let's get started. Here we have just our regular piece of printer paper. Just really thin, cheap, ordinary printer paper. And the first thing we need to do is colour our background. I've chosen three of the Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylics. We have Mermaid, Inky Pool and Cheesecake. For this technique it doesn't matter if you use translucents or opaques. We're just colouring the background. So first I'm going to add some spots of colour randomly all over the page. And I'm going to do that with all three colours. Keep them random so that when we colour the page they will merge beautifully. You could use three colours, three shades rather, from the same colour range, but I've decided to mix in the cheesecake yellow in with the blues for a little bit of contrast. Next I'm taking a scraper. This is a metal scraper, which I picked up from the parent shop. You could just as easily use an old credit card. Starting at one side, I'm going to drag the paint across and drag again. And you see how beautifully they all merge now and that cheesecake just adds a little more interest. Where you added the original spots of colour you will still get those round spots staying on the page and that's good because that adds even more interest. We need to take the paint right to the edges of the paper so I'm just making sure that every part of the paper is covered. Then I can scrape away any excess paint and now it's ready to dry. While this is drying I'm just going to clean away my craft mat. So now our craft mat is clean. It is important to clean between these two stages because now that this side has dried we're going to turn it over and if we'd left the excess paint on the mat underneath it would have transferred to our top side. I'm going to colour the back in exactly the same way, adding some random spots of colour and then I will drag across this paint in the same way as the front and then this too will need to be dried. So now we have both sides of our paper coloured and now you can decide which side you like best. I've decided I like this side better, it has more variation in colour. The next layer we're going to add is ink. Choose a colour that complements your base colour. I've used mainly blues so I'm going to use blue on my next layer. The stamp that I'm using has been designed by Ellen Vargo for Paper Artsy and the code is EEV02. The stamp I'm going to use is this large rectangular scratchy stamp. I've added the stamp to a flexi block and I'm going to use archival ink designed by Wendy Becky and it's the cornflower blue. I'm going to have my ink pad at the side here and just tap gently. It really doesn't matter if you don't cover the entire stamp as this is just a background layer. We're going to start in one corner and press down. Add some more ink and then we're going to turn the stamp around and press again. I'm going to continue doing this until the whole page is full. 
alternating the direction of the stamp as I go across the page just to add some interest. It would look very blocky, very uniform and far too structured if the stamp was facing the same way all the way across. I'm going to continue doing that until the whole page is filled. So our page is now completely covered with our first layer of inking. You can see how I varied the stamp going one direction and then the other across the whole page. The next layer is also ink. This time I'm using Archival in Watering Can. This is one of my favourite colours because it's not black but it's not um, as warm as brown. It's a much more neutral colour and it comes in very handy for lots of things. This time I'm going to use another of Ellen Bargo's stamps EEV06 and the one I'm going to use is this one that looks like some washers in a little grid formation. I'm not going to use a flexi block this time because I don't want to stamp the entire stamp. I'm going to press down and roll the ink onto just the centre section of the stamp and then I'm going to roll that onto my paper. I'm going to do this randomly across the whole page. Again, I'm going to vary the directions, vary the length of the stamp, keep changing direction. Because we're just rolling it onto the page, we're going to get it being quite patchy in some areas. Some parts will be missing, but that's okay, that's what we want. This is just another background layer. I think a little bit in the middle there and a little more at that end. That's our second layer. Again, done with ink. You can see how the grey of the watering can ink just complements the blue without being as stark and as bright and bold as it would be if I had used a black ink. Our next layer involves going back to paint. You need to choose three shades of the same colour. So I've gone for pink which will complement my blues and I have sherbet, orchid and Spanish mulberry and again these are all paper artsy fresco finish chalk acrylics. Choose the middle colour, the middle shade rather, and put your light and dark to one side for now. On a spare craft mat next to you, pour out a little paint. Now stamping directly into this would leave really thick globby paint all over your stamp. So smooth it out with your finger, nice and flat, and this will give you a surface not dissimilar to your ink pads. The next stamp I'm going to use is again from EEV06 and it's this one here in the middle with the small dots. This time I've gone back to the flexi block, I've applied my stamp, I'm going to tap it into the ink and then tap it off so that I don't have too much paint on the stamp. Now I'm going to apply it randomly all over the page but I am going to overlap each of the areas that have a darker second layer of ink. This will do two things, it will knock back that dark ink slightly but also it will prevent um, the page looking very blocky. If I stamp in between all of these dark patches it would just look like there were lots of blocks and squares over the whole page but by overlapping again changing directions the dark ink and the paint start to harmonize and you start to build up your layers to 
do this all over the page, overlapping each of those dark sections. Not completely covering them, you'll see that I'm overlapping them to just one side. If you have any gaps, you can go ahead and add a little more stamping if you wish. Have a little bit up there. I think that will do. That's our second layer. Um, going into the stamp finish. We're now going to do some stenciling. This layer has now dried and we're going to move on with some stenciling. It's PS001 and was designed by Lynn Brown. I'm going to place this up in the corner. I'm going to now take the lightest of our three pinks. This is the Sherbet. Again, I'm going to pour out a little onto a craft mat next to me. Spread that out. This time I'm going to pick it up with a small piece of cut and dry foam. With stenciling you really don't want to overload your sponge as the paint will bleed underneath the plastic. So pick up a little and dab it through all of the holes. Use a dabbing motion, a pouncing motion rather than um, a rubbing backwards and forwards. If you rub, then you will push it underneath the stencil again. I'm going to cover the whole sheet doing this, which will mean once I reach the bottom of this stencil, I will need to move it down and reposition it. And then I will move it to the side, reposition it again and continue stenciling until the whole sheet is covered with this light pink paint. A layer of stenciling is finished and you can see how those light pink spots overlap everything else. Now we're going to reposition the stencil exactly where we had it before. And we're going to take the darkest of our three pink paints. This one is the Spanish Mulberry. Again, I'm going to squeeze out a little onto my spare craft mat. Spread that out nice and thin. Now I'm going to take another stamp from the Ellen Bargo set, EEV06. And I'm going to be using this small stamp in the corner. I'm not going to use a flexi block for this. I'm just going to gently dip it into the paint, dab it off, and then I'm going to stamp through the holes onto the lighter paint below. You see some of the holes are too small to stamp into, but the paint will catch in most of them. I'll move that down into the next section and again dab into the paint, dab off so that you're not overloading the stamp and just stamp into the larger holes on top of the paler pink underneath. <coughs> Reposition our stamp once again. This layer has now dried and as you can see, we have our medium pink in the background, followed by the very pale pink through the stencil, followed by the darkest pink on top of those stenciled areas. The final layer on this bowl is going to be a layer of metallic glaze. Again, by Paper Artsy in their fresco finish range. I'm just going to apply a little across the page and quickly brush it on. It only needs to be a very thin layer just to add a little shimmer to 
shell but of course you don't need to add the metallic glaze if you don't want to the bow turns out very nicely if you just leave it with the matte finish of the paints once that has been spread out evenly and the whole page is covered we can just leave that to dry before going on and cutting up our page and making it into a bow. Of course at this point you now have a really pretty piece of background paper which you could use for numerous things, making cards, uh, you could make an envelope from it, cut it up and use it as embellishments, die cut, all kinds of things. But we're going to make this into a bow. The metallic glaze is now dried and as you can see it adds a lovely shimmer across the page. We now need to trim this into strips so we're going to turn it over. Our printer paper is approximately eight and a half by eleven inches and the first thing we need to do is to trim this down to just ten inches. This is going to be our first cut. So I've made the first cut, taking this piece off, put that one to one side, turn our page back over. This now measures approximately eight and a half by 10 inches. We need to divide the width into nine sections. Because it's only eight and a half, sadly we're a little bit short of nine inches, so we can't divide it up into equal inches. So now I need to revert back to metric. And I found that the best measurement is approximately 23 millimeters. So that's just a little bit over two centimeters. We're going to make our marks all the way across and we will end up with nine sections plus a tiny little strip at the end which can be discarded. skinny little strip at the end there that can be cut off and thrown away it's not really any use for anything else. Using my nine marks that I placed across there I trimmed off the very end skinny piece that we didn't need and I trimmed away three strips using the whole length. Now we need to trim another three but these need to be an inch shorter so my first job is going to be to take off another inch from the top. Once I've removed that inch, I'm then going to cut another three strips. So here's my inch strip that I took from the top. We're going to put that to one side and use it later. And I've taken off another three strips. So we have our original three, which measure 10 inches in length. These three measure nine inches in length. We now need to take off one more inch from the top of the remaining piece. And we'll put that to one side to use later. We now have our marks left that we made and this can be cut into three final strips. All our cutting is done now. We have our three first strips that measure 10 inches, our middle three strips that measure 9 inches and our final three strips that measure 8 inches. And here are our three off cuts. The first thing we're going to do is just trim one of these off cuts very slightly. It's just a little bit too wide. 
what we need. We don't need to take much off, just a little bit. Then we're going to bring the two ends together. You don't need to fold it, just bring the two ends together. And we're going to cut two points. And when we open that up, we have our base piece. That can go to one side. Now all of our other pieces, we need to fold in half. Make a crease so you know where the middle is. I'm going to do this on all nine pieces. All of our pieces now have been folded in half and have a central crease. We're going to take a glue stick, add some glue just over where you've made that centre crease. Then we're going to take one end, bring it around and stick it down over the centre, leaving just that little gap at the top. Can you see that little gap there? That's all you need to leave. Add a little more glue. And bring the other side around on top of the first piece leaving just that little gap again we're going to do that with all of our pieces so again add glue in the middle hold it in front of you and bring this side around and over the center bringing it in nice and tightly so we just have that small gap left a little more glue and bring this around into the middle. And this is our final piece for the base layer made with the three longest strips, the 10 inch strips. And those are our three base pieces. Now let's take our little ribbony bit from that's going to make the bottom with a little glue in the middle and one of our pieces will stick down over there. Add some more glue to the middle and we're going to layer these on. We need to have them they are laid out equally so before you stick them down just lay around until you get your position right and that's the base layer done make sure you squidge everything down nice and tightly we can put that to one side now let's take the next strip. This is one of the nine inch strips. And again, we're going to fold it round in exactly the same way, putting glue in the middle, holding it out in front of you, bringing the strip end around and over the middle, tightening it up so you just have a small hole. Let's do that with all three of our middle strips. all three of the middle ones done we can begin to layer those into the main body of the ribbon bow. We're going to take this and we're going to place it in between two previous points. The ends will start to come up so you just need to press down in the middle. Try not to squash any of your outside pieces. This hole in the middle will get tighter as we proceed with the layers and you will reach a point where you literally can only get one finger inside. So 
it is much easier to add this layer and the next layer one piece at a time rather than stick the three together and then try and stick those three on top. You've got much more control doing it this way. So that's our second layer done. And now we'll just carry on and finish the top layer. In the same way, bringing our pieces into the middle, sticking them down and closing them up till we just have that small gap. And one more to go. That's our final three pieces. Some more glue in the middle. And again, we're going to place this one between two of the previous layer. And you will see, as soon as I start to put this one in, sides come up and you're left with very little space in between. You may have to slightly move the previous one out of the way so that you can get in. I think on this one I'll actually put the glue onto the back of here. And there's not very much space in there at all so I'm going to just move those apart slightly with my fingers and press that one inside. Now we're almost done but we have a little bit of a gap in the middle. So let's go back to our spare pieces. We have this smaller piece that we cut off. We're just going to fold that round onto itself some extra glue onto that piece where the join is and we're going to just pop that inside. At this point you'll probably only be able to get your little finger inside to press it down. You could use the end of a paintbrush or a pencil, let's try a pencil inside there, just to press it down into place. Once you're happy with that that is stuck, we can then plump up some of these little points that have become a little squashed. And there we have it, it's all done. Now just to compare two, this is the one I showed you at the beginning, this one did not have the metallic glaze over it, so it still has a very matte look, which was achieved by using the chalk paints. This one has the metallic glaze on it and it does have a lovely sheen but both of them are equally pretty and it really is personal preference as to which you go for. Now we've still got this spare piece we can use that to create a matching greetings card just a small one I've used a strip of my leftover paper here and a little tab here and I've just teamed that with some corrugated card and a stamp and a sentiment and I still had enough left over to add another little strip again on top of corrugated card to a gift tag. So I can use this strip here to make matching card and tag to go with this one and this bow has it's matching card and tag. So I hope you enjoyed that. There are lots of tutorials on how to make this bow on the internet, mostly with ribbons, some with paper, but I haven't seen one done where you create your own paper to start with. And I think that's a really nice touch that you can use your own favorite paints, your favorite stamps, your inks, and you can coordinate everything to make a really nice little gift set. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.